we're girls, we tend to overpack and throw in a cold weather destination and all of a sudden you've got a packing nightmare. So I'm Finn, I'm one of the co-founders of Trip Travel Gear and today we're gonna pack for your upcoming Iceland trip. I have all of my hiking outfit built up in one XL packing cube because it's the largest packing cube that we offer and hiking is the most popular activity that you're gonna be doing here. I'm explaining this packing video in my airplane outfit. The classic American black legging on the airplane is gonna be the baseline essentially for everything. If you're coming in colder weather, you can go fleece lined legging. And if you're coming in warmer weather, you can just bring your favorite pair of black leggings. But that is not going to cut it on the daily here in Iceland. It is wet uh, more than it is dry. So how can you build from your legging? On top of your legging, you're gonna want something else. You can go with a second legging, um, which sounds kind of crazy, but if you just size up, then you can also get a waterproof legging or a wind resistant legging. So look into, or a jogger, look into something like that, because this is the worst thing to be walking up to a waterfall in. The cotton is going to grab all of the mist coming off of the waterfall and you're going to be miserable for the rest of the day. So it might be okay on the plane, but not on the daily here in Iceland. Another thing you can put on top of your legging, or if it's warmer, just wear, is a nice hiking pant. And uh, you're gonna, again, wanna look for something that is not cotton-based because that'll give you a little bit of resistance against the, the water. For the very wet days, which might be 60% of your trip, I'm not hoping for poor weather, but it, we are so close to the Arctic Circle, it's, it's part of the environment here. I cannot believe I haven't seen more people in rain pants. There is a clothing item to, that solves this problem. Um, these are kind of fun. I think they're cute enough, you know, whatever. I've been wearing these around and girls have been commenting like, why didn't I think of that? So I'm just throwing on rain pants on top of everything else, on top of leggings, under hiking pants, under rain pants, and it's June. And I am not warm, <laughs> I promise you. So if you are in a dry area, you're going on your little hike, great. Maybe you've got your rain pants in a bag and then you're going up to a waterfall. You can throw them on real quick. You can go behind the waterfall. You can take all your pictures and you will keep your clothes dry for the rest of the day. So rain pants have been the best item that I've brought on the trip. We can stay on the bottom half while we're here. You're absolutely gonna need some hiking socks. You're gonna want really tall hiking socks and look for merino wool because that is great moisture wicking and it will also keep you warm. Go ahead and pack all those extra socks because it would be easy then halfway through the day to change out your socks if uh, you're getting water down in your boots or anything. Speaking of, 100% bring waterproof boots or shoes. I definitely recommend something taller. I've been walking through rivers, streams, rain, and I'm not getting any splash up here. So there are tennis shoe looking hiking shoes that have Gore-Tex and are water resistant, and that's okay, but this really is making a big difference, especially wearing leggings and waterproof leggings that tuck right in and I feel really secure and waterproof for splashing around. The only thing then with shoes is I hate wearing big boots like this on the plane. I think it's so uncomfortable and you probably have a longer red eye to get over here. So if you don't want to do that, then you can bring a second pair of shoes that you're wearing on the plane. You can walk around in town or heading into the grocery store, but opt for something that's really, really small and flat. That's not going to make a big deal because you're not going to spend a lot of time in them in the duration of your trip. Two pairs of shoes should do it. One of my top dumbest things I brought on the trip was a pair of flip-flops. I brought flip-flops thinking that I was going to be using this in Blue Lagoon, other hot springs, but culturally this is not really a thing here. Uh, you're barefoot, a lot of times you shower with no clothes on, and you just will not need flip-flops on your trip to Iceland. Now let's continue to build up from the waist in our hiking outfit. Your base layer at a lot of outdoor stores is called a base layer. 
The best are typically made out of 100% merino wool. Again, that's moisture wicking and that's going to keep you just climate neutral in whatever environment you're in within the hour here in Iceland. Building up from that, you might remove and put on layers throughout the day. So you can add on a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt on top of that. And then your one fleece. Because these bigger items are so bulky, pick your favorite, stick with it, and then that's gonna be your hiking warm layer that you're gonna wear under a jacket. So speaking of, of course, there's great compressible down jackets that pack up really small. I am always freezing and was here at the end of May and knew it was gonna be pretty cold. So I have a huge down jacket, but you can definitely go smaller than this one. Opt for brighter colors. They're gonna stand out in your pictures. Colors like yellow and red really pop against the moody dark backgrounds. So <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of yellow jackets here in Iceland. Okay, so now that entire built out hiking outfit, apart from the leggings that I have on my body, are going into one of our XL compression cubes. Of course, the best thing about compression cubes is that you can throw all of the scrap right into it and you can take out all of the air and save yourself some space. So in one XL cube is that entire hiking outfit with multiple layers. I'm gonna go ahead and put this into my carry-on. You might notice that I don't have a rain jacket. I have one here with me on the table, but I'm gonna tell you which cube that is going in. If you only make it this far in the video and you only pack that for Iceland, you will have a great trip. That is honestly all that you need for Iceland. You will be completely fine. I would really say that everything else is extra, I have worn that 95% of this trip, but I will tell you what's in the rest of these packing cubes here, completing out the XL set. The XL set comes with a second XL cube, and we're gonna talk about that, but in my large cube, I have all my sleeping items and a few extra t-shirts. So I've got some bras and underwear. I have my cozy pair of flannel sleep pants, but you might have a favorite pair of sweatpants. Just go ahead and add those because you might just want it cozying around here in Iceland. What I have loved is a lot of these places all have electric heat and every place has been very warm. I was expecting to be colder inside, but electricity is abundant here with all of the geothermal activity and none of the Airbnbs have been stingy on the heat or anything. So if anything, I think you will be warmer sleeping than colder. So you can plan on that. And then the second must bring item for your Iceland trip, in the summer at least, is an eye mask. You would think that in the land of the midnight sun, there would be more blackout curtains on some Airbnbs or in your camper van. And that really has just not been the case. So look for a full blackout <laughs> eye mask because I have never really slept in this ever, and I've now worn it almost every night of this trip, and this has been a lifesaver. So in the large cube goes my jammies and all my extra cozy indoor things. Again, we're probably fine with what we've got, but I am here for 18 days, and you know, like a girl wants to look a little cute in her pictures and stuff. So I kind of have like my extras outfit here in my other extra large bag. I've also now built this out as an entire outfit so I can change layers and wear it in multiple ways. But essentially the look is starting with a pair of pleather black leggings. These, in my opinion, totally fit the moody vibe here in Iceland, and they've done pretty well in the mist, actually, but these would look ridiculous if I was hiking with them, but I loved wearing these out to dinner in Reykjavik and to and from the Blue Lagoon and just some other more like easy drive and sightseeing things. So it started with a pair of pleather black leggings, plus bonus points because these are so small. They're so small. I will take you now to the second dumbest thing that I brought on the trip, which is jeans. Every travel blogger will always tell you not to bring jeans. 
I wasn't doing that religiously for a while. Then I started bringing jeans because I was like, it's not that big of a deal. And I wear jeans at home, so jeans are comfortable to wear. This is a terrible destination for jeans because it is so wet. Um, and jeans are obviously so uncomfortable when you're sitting in the car. So jeans, a big zero for Iceland. Building up again, this cute outfit. I have a very small and lightweight black turtleneck shirt that layers very well for, I of course could just accessorize this where this is a little Catwoman outfit, but I have been mostly wearing it then under a cable net sweater. Of course, Iceland is a wonderful place to come and purchase something like this. So you could leave extra space and take home something really beautiful like this. But I brought this from home and now this has been my walking around more urban outfit. Because I have room in this packing cube, I threw in an extra long sleeve shirt and I'll pack this up and add it to the carry-on. When you're packing big bulky items into the compression cubes, it's best to just lay them flat instead of rolling. I know that there's a lot of packing hack videos that talk about rolling clothes, but these work best when you just fold it flat. The XL set comes with a laundry bag, which because I'm on my 10th day of the trip, I got some underwear in here. We're gonna put that right in the bag. And then the last one, in our tube cube here, I have all of my warm accessories, which again are helping really just with layering and I've been taking on and off at different points of the day. So in here, oh, I forgot about my cute outfit hat to go along with my cable knit sweater, of course. I missed him. All right, in the slim cube, I have multiple items. I have a scarf that I also used as a blanket on the plane. I have been, I could wear this, of course, cute with the cable knit sweater. Um, mostly it has just been keeping my neck and my face warm or just out of the wind. Second item, I would recommend bringing multiple buffs. These get kind of just wet and gross pretty quickly and you can easily wear multiple at the same time if it's really windy. I, I hate, hate, hate when I have wind in my ears. So I have been wearing this on my head under a hat. So I have multiple hats with me. Of course, I have my cute one over here. I have just a black beanie that again, hiking, I've been doubling up just to protect my ears. And then, you know, not just for Instagram, but I've been wearing this wool hat with a brim because wool, it is quite warm. And I've been able to keep the rain off of some of my face at some points. So I've been grabbing, leaving this in the car, plopping it on my head in and out of the grocery store and the gas station, things like that. The last item going into my little accessory cube are a pair of gloves. And what I wish that I had that I don't have right now is an additional set of waterproof gloves. That was my 100% biggest mistake in coming into this trip. I was just grabbing gloves for warmth, but what's happening is out in the mist or in the waterfalls, taking photos, my hands are freezing, freezing, freezing. So Tim's been nice enough to lend me some of his and I have just been uh, regretting not having waterproof gloves. So bring those on your trip. So let me just show you how that entire XL six piece set is fitting just right here into a carry on sized backpack. This backpack is the same liter size and dimension of a carry on suitcase. So whether you're going rolling suitcase or a backpack like this, this is a 46 liter backpack. And I even have a laptop in here as well, which I'll show you because I know the magic of the internet. Sometimes it doesn't look like things are possible. But here's my laptop right in here. And this can just go in a luggage carrier above you on the plane. Now, last but not least, your personal item for the plane. If you remember, we talked about the rain jacket earlier. What I recommend bringing with you as your personal item is your rain jacket ready to go just in case when you land in Iceland, you don't wanna be just kind of stuck or having to rummage through all of your luggage. So I have the remaining 
small packing cube in the six piece set with the rain jacket right in here. This would be a great place to also throw in that scarf if you want to use that as a blanket on the plane and then you have it right in front of you at your seat. Just to help save space in my carry-on then, I have my trip travel gear, toiletry bag. This is the 311 bag that comes with our three-piece set. And then, because I'm being a little bit extra on this trip and filming like I am, I have my hair crimping tool that made my hair like this into our toiletry accessory bag. So this set comes together with even a third piece in our toiletry bag set, but due to space, I'm not bringing the third piece here. So those are going into, you know what, I'll, I'll put the hair crimper into my carry on, but the toiletry bag is coming right here so I can easily take it out as security. And last but not least, I have our new Trip Travel Gear tech pouch. One of the things that you will need if you're American or Canadian visiting Iceland is an outlet adapter. So make sure you grab one of these. These are inexpensive, but this will convert your power uh, to go into the wall here in Europe. And I've got other things like my computer charger and a mouse and a mouse pad and an SD card to keep all my photos and videos from the trip. So I'm zipping all of this into my pouch and this is also going in to our packable day pack right here. Whenever I'm going to a more urban environment, I like to compress this backpack down into its packable size and just throw it into my luggage because it's not the most cosmopolitan looking backpack to have through the airport, but I love it for day trips. So that's why it's great for both Coming to Iceland, everyone on the plane was all geared out in all of their hiking stuff. So this is a great backpack to have because I didn't have to pack it extra and it's, I got all my stuff in it. And it is the perfect dimension to slide right on the seat in front of you as your personal item. If you have any extra space in your luggage, one of my favorite things that we have with us is a portable Bluetooth speaker. This has just really been helpful to set the mood and the vibe in these cozy Airbnbs and guest houses here in Iceland. So I would recommend bringing this if you do still have space. And then if you have any questions regarding any of our gear, you can always reach out or DM us at Trip Travel Gear on Instagram or send us an email at hello at triptravelgear.com. Thanks for hanging out with me in Iceland. If you're interested in more Iceland because you are planning your trip, then you should absolutely go check out Tim and Finn, our other channel where we have our entire adventure series called Tripped of the same name. Yet you can come along our adventure here in Iceland. Enjoy your trip.